we are back at last and I make a solemn promise that this video will not be two hours I will do my best <laughs> but the trailer just came out for Shadow and Bone and I may have already watched it like four times and cried so without rambling on I mean if anyone's been a longtime book fan Seeing something that you've been picturing in your head for years is just a moment. So, I'm definitely back in the mood. I know that Siege and Storm won't be in the show because they haven't cast Nikolai or anything, so it won't be in the show. But I'm so in the mood. I'm so in the mood right now, and I will do my best to make this vlog shorter and more concise. I'm just way too excited and I'm also kind of happy now seeing the trailer that my first vlog was so detailed because I mean that's what we're going to be seeing in two months from now but without further ado let's just dive into Siege and Storm. I only read a bit so I don't have much to comment on but it's already so much better than book one because you can tell that this is where she finally expands. Like I said in the last vlog book one felt like a standalone this is where it finally feels like a series and we're not just in court anymore. But the thing that I wanted to comment was that here, she definitely doesn't plan to come back. She hears that a cult has risen around a Sun Summoner, and she doesn't even want to think about it. So, considering what she did at the end of book one, no wonder that Mal under misunderstands her nightmares. She knows that she is actually closer to the Darkling now than Mal. And that's great. <laughs> that's great for me. I mean, for obvious reasons, but also because I think it's very, it makes her more complex. Because from the get-go, she's not, she's definitely not cut and dry a good guy. She killed a lot of people, and then she just left, and she doesn't plan to come back. Even though she's the only one who can actually stand up the, to the Darkling. I know she thinks that she can't, and I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, she can't actually stand up to him. He is infinitely more powerful and the only way she defeats him is when he realizes that he's doomed so i'm loving the detail and i'm already having a better time than with book one this is going to be great by the time you reach ruin and rising i'm probably going to be just like smiling all the time sorry but this is hilarious i read 15 pages and the darkling is already back like she truly escaped well like he followed her immediately Behind them, shrouded in shadow, lounging in a rickety chair as if it were a throne, was the Darkling. I mean, he would. He would actually sit in a rickety weevil chair <laughs> like a throne. Oh, he's so dramatic and I love him. I find it a bit funny that the only scars that he actually has after a thousand years are the one that Alina caused on him. He's, I mean, he's still pretty because that's how Lee writes him, but the fact that he's just so casually talking to her. It's like, so how are you finding life in hiding, Alina? You don't look well. You've just been leaving expensive pins everywhere. He's so... <sighs> this is what I wanted from him. Cool, collected, not... Not if he just burst in and was like, so how are you enjoying your trek, Alina? I would have probably rioted if that was how he came back. Oh, now he's gonna show her that he can control the Volcra, and that, that is a power that I can't wait to see. If we get a season two, which we will, I am manifesting. I'm regretting a bit that they didn't just now because I watched the trailer. I love Ben Barnes with all of my heart, but they could have just given him contacts or even CGI'd it because it's so powerful that he has gray eyes that she just describes them as quartz all the time. Because then later when Alina is going to have the, the dyad Raylo thing with him, She's going to see his eyes, and by his eyes, she's going to know that it's him. If he has just dark brown eyes, that's... I love brown eyes, but it's not unique in the way that his need to be. Like, he has gray eyes and black hair, and he's very pale. He is pretty much deaf. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just don't see him as a person with brown eyes, and I don't really like the fact that he didn't just CGI it if Ben didn't want to wear contacts. I feel like the gray 
gray eyes were a very important detail because no one else has eyes like that. So I don't love it. <laughs> but he is being so dramatic. But finally, in a way that I appreciate, not like in book one, his gaze was gray flint. Uh, thank you for the reminder that all men can be made fools. No, Alina. The gift you've given me is so much greater. He turned away. I darted another glance at Mal. Unlike you, the Darkling said, I understand gratitude and I wish to express it. Again, 20 pages in and the action is already going. No one can tell me that these books are slow because they're genuinely not. Chapter 2. Now we're going to be on the boat. Which I'm not looking forward to, really, because because Nikolai Nikolai is introduced here, and I hate his guts. I cannot stand Nikolai. But on the bright side, we get to see Genya again, and we get to see the Darkling just being bloody pissed off that Alina doesn't have taste. But mm, but yeah, Nikolai, Nikolai, oh. I do apologize that you have to look at me not being pleased about him because I know that everyone loves him, but apologies. He is finally being interesting. I want to see him, I managed. Every day, I want to know he's safe. Of course, I'm not cruel, Alina, just cautious. Those creatures, de Nichevoya. Nichevoya, I had that as my Instagram handle for like years. Basically, all in all, I'm loving this, and now he's gonna tell her the thing that I love so much in front of Mal. He's like, I'm gonna take you below the deck and make you scream, which could be could be considered uh, or interpreted in two ways. I don't remember why, so I can't wait till we get to it, but why did the Darkling, of all people, hire Nikolai? I mean... If he's the most famous guy around here, and they're clearly, they were always planning to run away, why is, why did he hire the most famous guy on the seas? You would think that he would want subtlety when he's going for the whip. So, why didn't he just get his own ship? Or if not that, then why not just get someone stupid and not someone who clearly has enough balls to challenge Ivan? While in the presence of the Darkling on your ship. Like, clearly he has too much boldness for it to be a good idea to hire him as someone to run your ship while you go and get a very important artifact is all I'm saying. I think, I don't remember why the Darkling chose him, but I hope she explains it because it doesn't make much sense. Even though I dislike Alina in comparison to Alexander. <laughs> The Darkling just stared out into the waves. I considered shoving him over the railing. Sure, he was hundreds of years old, but could he swim? Whew. <laughs> I can't. Why is she so funny? Tell me you're not contemplating what I think you are, I said. Tell me the amplifier is for some other stupid gullible girl. Someone less stubborn, less selfish, less hungry for the life of a mouse? Believe me, he said. I wish I could. I felt sick. A Grisha can have only one amplifier. You told me that yourself. Morozawa's amplifiers are different. I gaped at him. There's another like the stag. They were meant to be used together, Alina. They are unique. Just as we are. He would know. He is the last Morozova, but... I am finally having a good time, and I immediately, immediately, it feels, it feels less, I don't know, less naive than book one, and that's where I think the difference is, because this is actually a series and not a standalone. Why does this line, why, why did it always go over my head? I don't remember it. You can't control the fold. It has to be destroyed. Careful, Alina, he said with a slight smile. I've had the same thought about you. Oh my god. Oh my god. As an eternal mall apologist, because I like his progress and I always knew they would end up together, I am a die-hard 
shipper of the dynamic between Alexander and Alina. And it only gets better from here because we're gonna get the dyad thing. What we want, this is exactly what we want, to feel the weight between her and Maul and the Darkling. Like this entire conversation, because he's finally calm and he's not just being like a 15 year old little bitch. This is exactly what I wanted. How he's just giving them short answers. The Darkling arch brow like the stag. You won't hurt her, Maul said, but I could hear the fear in his voice. I don't want to hurt her, said the Darkling. I want you to do as I ask. <laughs> It took me months to find the stag, Maul said desperately. I still don't know how we did it. <laughs> I won't have a girl tortured on my ship. The Darkling turned his cold gaze on the privateer. You work for me, Sturmhond. You'll do your job, or getting paid will be the least of your worries. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, why did the Darkling hire him? You could have just hired any bozo to, like command a whaler why did you hire the one with balls like i don't think anyone would w walk up to you and be like i won't let you torture anyone on my ship i mean <laughs> serious you could have just hired someone else but you had out of everyone you had to hire the literal prince of ravka buckle in hmm i'd like to free you he said quietly Free me, flay me, so many options. I could still feel the press of his knife at my cheek. He sighed. It was a threat, Alina. I had accomplished what I needed to. So you wouldn't have cut me. I didn't say that. His voice was pleasant and matter-of-fact, as always. Not as always, that's not true, because at the ending of Shadow and Bone, he was very, very teenage girly. He might have been threatening to carve me up or ordering his dinner. In the dim light, I could just make out the fine traces of his scars. I knew I should stay quiet, force him to speak first, but my curiosity was too great. How did you survive? He ran his hand over the sharp line of his jaw. Again, that movement. I, have, I find it so difficult to imagine that as a normal room movement. It seems the Volcra did not care for the taste of my flesh, he said almost idly. Have you ever noticed that they do not feed on each other? <laughs> I shuddered. They were his creations, just like the thing that had buried its teeth in my shoulder. The skin there still pulsed. Like calls to like. It's not an experience I'd care to repeat. I've had my fill of the Volker's mercy. And yours. And then they're just talking and she's like, Why do you want to make me stronger? <laughs> uh, you have been anything but convenient, Alina. Bagra warned me. She said you were arrogant, blinded by ambition. Did she now? <laughs> His voice was ice, and what other treason did she whisper in your ear? That she loved you, I said angrily, that she believed you could be redeemed. He looked away then, but not before I saw a flash of pain on his face. What had he done to her, and what had it cost him? Redemption, he murmured, salvation, penance, my mother's quaint ideas. Perhaps I should have paid closer attention. Yeah, and he brought out the lives of saints. I wonder if we're going to have to pull out the book again, but... Ooh, I'm in pain. I am in pain every time I think about his background. Every time. He's lived so long, then he's suffered so long, he could not have just ended up in a different way, and that's why I'm okay with it. This conversation, because he is absolutely right. And this doesn't sound mean when he says it, it just sounds true. You think you found a family with him, you think you found a future, but you will grow powerful and he will grow old. He will live his short Otkazatia life and you will watch him die. Shut up, he smiled. Go on, stamp your foot, fight your true nature. All the while your country suffers because of you. Because I put my trust in a girl who cannot stand the thought of her own potential. He rose and rounded the desk. Despite my anger, I took a step back, banging into the chair behind me. I know what you feel when you're with the tracker, he said. I doubt that. He gave a dismissive wave. No, not the absurd pining you've yet to outgrow. I know the truth in your heart, the loneliness, the growing knowledge of your own difference. He leaned in closer. The ache of it. I tried to hide the shock of recognition that went through me. I don't know what you're talking about, I said, but the words sounded false to my ears. It will never fade, Alina. It will only grow worse, no matter how many scarves you hide behind or what lies you tell, no matter how far or how fast you run. I tried to turn away, but he reached out and took hold of my chin, forcing me to look at him. He was so close I could feel his breath. There are no others like a Selena, he whispered, and there never will be. Whew. 
that gets me every time. That conversation gets me every time because he's not wrong. He's finally not wrong and she finally wrote him as ancient as he is supposed to be. Because he's telling her as it is. He's just like, the difference between you and the fact that you're powerful, it's gonna matter at some point and he will die before you and the line where he says the ache of the difference and the loneliness like and the fact that finally he isn't being a little bitch he's just like no not the absurd pining you've yet to outgrow she finally made him ancient and not basic like at the end of shadow and bone where he's just being jealous for no reason this is what i wanted from him you can feel the weight of his life when he is talking to her and how much she needs to learn and grow and it's great it's just absolutely great i am 50 pages in and this is the best i know soon they grow apart and she goes with nikolai but this is everything and all that i wanted from book one i am so looking forward to what happens after this here's a thought um, even though I hate how they're killing all these mythical creatures for the amplifiers, why did they just not release the sea whip and let it sink? <laughs> I mean, without Maul, the Darkling could probably never find it again, and if it dies, it can just sink to the bottom and no one has to have the amplifier, like... A random thought that just got into my head, but it, how would this story go if Alina didn't get the second amplifier? Like, and in the end she doesn't get the bird. I mean, I understand that in Ruin and Rising, when she finally gets Maul's amplifier, she gets the power, so everyone is full of light and they destroy the shadow fold. But if she didn't get the, the second amplifier, what then? I mean, would she even have the power to destroy it? And if not, then what? What would happen if she didn't get the scales? And now I'm interested in that option. I wish I could ask Lee, but unfortunately I can't ask Lee. Like if they just let the sea whip, the poor, poor sea whip, who they're gonna have to descale. I don't even want to think about it. They could have just let him sunk to the bottom. They didn't have to take him with them. That's an aspect of this book that I will always hate, <laughs> but what would have happened if she had not gotten it? Time to pull out Historisantia again because we are looking at interesting no, said Stormhorn. He tapped the page with one long finger. Unless I'm very much mistaken, that's the creature we just captured. There was no hiding it. Behind Sancti Ilya, splashing around in the waves of a lake or an ocean, was the distinctive shape of the sea whip. Let's see it. I'm afraid the book's gonna fall there. Let's see it. And there we go. There's what it looks like. Firebird, Stag, and Rosalia. <laughs> kind of looks like Jesus, actually, in this edition. But yeah, here's what Alina is seeing so we can keep up. The fact that she says it and she's right. But she has one amplifier now and she's killed Rosalia, which means she has the second one. And she's still not a match for the Darkling until she realizes that she can control his power too. Just like, imagine the power level of Alexander. If she, who is pretty much the only person in this world who is his equal aside from Bagra, she's not a match for him without amplifiers. Just imagine how powerful he became and he is an amplifier on his own. Like, how is it a surprise to anyone that he is who he is? He is actually incredibly sane for having lived so long as someone who's literally unrivaled, unmatched, and he's a living amplifier, so if someone killed him, they could be very well off. I'm remembering a demon in the wood, and of course Bagra grew his confidence and his desire to change things be because she had to. No one could have survived like that. No one could have survived with that much power and no equals. He is eternally lonely. 
So, the fact that Alina isn't even his equal. I'm just gonna reference a line from Ruin and Rising when he's, in the end, he's like, you were never on my level and I'm alone now. It tears me up inside every single time, but it makes so much sense. He's like, if Alina is here, he's like up there. He's not even in the same ballpark. And that just makes him so compelling. Because he's not meant. He wasn't meant to be that powerful. And that's what destroyed him and his mother. And I love it. I love it so much. They were just not meant for this world. It's horribly painful, but I still love it a lot because those kinds of characters always draw me in. It's interesting. It's an interesting thing to play with. What would you do if you had a character who was so powerful that they literally had no match, no rival? And I'm enjoying myself. I'm not commenting that much. In this portion of the book, I'm almost to page 100 because she's with Nicola. I have nothing to comment on here, but she just said that she isn't a match for the Darkling, even, even with two amplifiers. And I had to... I had to just comment on that. This is where it gets truly great. Because while she's with Nikolai and the others, you can tell that she doesn't belong, that she's different, and that she is very not happy with where she is, even though she doesn't mind it. I already read like that much. It's very easy to get through. But now they're in the fold, and I, I just love Alina because she becomes this person who's capable of fighting for the light, but also like understanding that she has a darkness and that she is like the darkling and that the monsters are hers too. Because now they're in the fold and <laughs> you take pity on the mindless before you take pity on those who kill with pleasure. They just opened fire on all of the Volcra and their offspring, if that's the word. And Alina can hear the human pain and then she hears the Darkling. As among all of this, she hears the Darkling and she's the only one who actually minds the cries because she is part of the darkness now. You've become quite the killer, Alina. That cool voice. My eyes flew open. The Darkling stood before me, his black kefta rippling over the hummingbird's deck. I gasped and stepped back, staring wildly around me, but no one was watching. They were whooping and shouting, gazing down at the flames, again taking pleasure in the killing. Don't worry, the Darkling said gently. It gets easier with time. Here, I'll show you. He slid a knife from the sleeve of his kefta, and before I could cry out, he slashed toward my face. I threw my hands up to defend myself, a scream tearing loose from my throat. The light vanished, and the ship was plunged into darkness. I fell to my knees, huddling on the deck, ready to feel the piercing steel of Grisha's steel. He wasn't even there, but... <sighs> but he's not wrong. They're cheering and whooping while they're killing. The Volcra are people who have been corrupted and turned into mindless monsters. They don't want to kill, they just do. They're pretty much the worst kind of animal. But they're taking pleasure in killing it and in the screams. And that's exactly what makes it really good karma that Nikolai is turned into one later. I love it. I love it a lot. This is where you see Alina because even in this group she is different and you can tell that she would fit in better with the Darkling and the other Grisha, and that's exactly what the point was. The King of Ravka is called Alexander, too. I mean, not in the same way, his is actually spelled like Alexander, and the Darkling is Alexander, which is very different. It seems more olden, and it's way more Slavic, the spelling. But they have the same name, no wonder she's so surprised when he tells her the name, she's just like, so common, I was expecting something cooler. Well, Alexander. I won't call him Alexander anymore because I don't want to associate him with the disgusting human being, if that, that is the king of Ravka. So Alexander Morozova is the Darkling from now on because ew. But that's so cool somehow. And now they finally fell, they left the fold, and now... Nikolai finally revealed that he is Nikolai and is, he's about to become even more <laughs> insufferable. So I'm not sure if I will comment on that because I know a lot of people love him, but I might, I might if I feel petty enough. 
hand it to her. Though Alina and Mal are my favorites here because they're so annoyed that he's the prince. Brothers, he said, I have brought the Sun Summoner back to Ravka. I couldn't help myself. I hauled off and punched him in the face. Thank you, Alina, for doing God's work. Because if you hadn't, I would have probably just shifted realities and punched the crap out of him myself. Congratulations, Alina. You're back in my good graces. <laughs> we hate him. I'm not going to talk that much at this point because it's only Nikolai. And I hate him with all my... I hate him. Like, he just opens his mouth and I want to punch him. So I'm very much related to Alina and Mal right now. Yeah, I just wanted to say where I am because it's been a while. And the update, yeah. I'll just try and speed through this part with Nikolai. And then hopefully I'll have a lot more to actually comment. I mean, I'm team magic. We all know this. But the fact that... The Grisha have been under the boot of the king for literal centuries. Even with the Darkling's power, they've been under his boot for centuries because he couldn't do shit without Alina. He does one thing, one thing that actually establishes their dominance in that they can't be bullied around. And a wave of anti-Grisha sentiment swept through Ravka. So they fight back for once. I, I mean, I know you're going to say like, I mean, of course they attacked a village. He displayed that they can't be messed with. Like, let's just ignore everything. And he did something that showed everyone the Grisha are not to be messed with. He knew their power and their age was coming to an end. He is... He's been alive for a long time, and he's pretty much sick of it. So from his standpoint, he did one thing to prove to them that they can actually fight back and that they're not really pawns of the king. And anti grisha sentiment swept through Ravka. So basically only like them when they work for the disgusting human being that is the king. Safe to say, I get why people are anti grisha but... They were pretty much fine with them while they were <laughs> controlled. And all I'm saying is that now everyone hates them because they showed that they aren't in control. That they aren't controlled by the king and by the palace. And I hate it. Pretty much I hate it. So not to rehash too much. I won't talk that long this time. But if you're against... If you're against what the Grisha are doing, I can't help you. I genuinely can't. Now I'm remembering that the king actually lives for a little while. Why is he not dead yet? Yeah, Genya kills him, but... Yeah, no. I would just go with the Darkling to get rid of all the Lansovs and then maybe something would actually be fixed. The amount of loathing that I have for the humans... <laughs> Like, I need to compose myself. I just passed the whole scene where Nikolai kissed her and then he paraded her around and then they were at dinner and I'm just like, imagine how cool the book would have been <laughs> if she'd actually had a proper, proper conversation with the Darkling and they went against the king together. I mean, I know, I know that this is an older book and it's a YA, but unlike before, I don't know why, maybe because I read a lot since I read this, I'm just so disappointed in how black and white it is. I mean, I know it changes very soon because when they start have the start having the Ben Solo and Ray Bond now, when they're going to see each other, it's going to be a lot more complex and she is actually going to learn that he's just very much alone in the world and it's gonna screw him over when Bagra dies and I can't wait for that but so far it's just so black and white she has absolutely no real motivations she's just being carted about by Nikolai and I hate it a lot and <laughs> The fact that she didn't immediately middle finger Nikolai, I would be like, okay, you want me to go with you? Sure. Just uh, let me know when your father's dead and I'll come and help you. Maybe then I'll think about it. 
and his disgusting ass assuming the throne like no one should be on the throne the grisha should be on the throne all the lands of suck and that's just basically all i have to say about that and i wish maul would just take alina away and they could live in a cottage immediately not deal with this bullshit because now they're gonna go back go back to court and i'm so not so not in the mood for it this is somehow even worse not just anti Ravka sentiment <clears throat> the king's soldiers had turned on the Grisha, pulling them from their beds in the middle of the night and mounting sham trials to determine their loyalty. They tried to attack members of the second arm. They fight back. And just a small group of them, not everyone, they were just stationed somewhere. They fight back against the king's bullshit. And the armies that come with their guns and are like, you are inferior to us. Even your leader has to confer to our leader. They had the audacity to pull Grisha from their beds. That had nothing to do with the Darklings' demonstration of power. They were somewhere else. They were both stationed together as soldiers. They pulled them from their beds. And... I mean, sham trials maybe tortured them. I don't know. Considering that they fought back, I don't want to know what they did to them. But with every single new line, I'm just very pissed off that Alina is allied with them. I mean, if you don't want her allied with the Darkling, sure. I would love to have Alina actually like take her Grisha and just fucking leave. Not even talk to the... To the royal family anymore. Just take your Grisha and leave. Let's have three factions, not two. Because if you have Nikolai and the Darkling, or more rather, the king and his army and the Darkling, how are you choosing the king? How, Alina? How? Take your Grisha and just run away. If you don't want to join the Darkling, I don't understand it, but fine. Just leave. Leave because you are killing me here killing me. I am just here wishing that the Darkling slaughtered the entire first army. <sighs> I am exhausted. I am losing it, losing it, losing it. She came to the capital. To the king. We know what he did. We know. We read the tailor. And Nikolai had the gall to tell her to look penitent. I would spit in his face if I didn't kill him using the cut on the spot. I'm tempted to put you to death immediately, but my son says that will only make you a martyr. He made it sound as if I was a groundskeeper or a county clerk. It would be my greatest honor to serve the Rovkin King. Alina, honey, take your Grisha and get the fuck out of the capital. I am begging you. I am begging you. If you so much as look at the king with anything but rage, <laughs> I will lose it. Very well. At least temporarily, you will serve as the commander of the Grisha. I thank you, Moitzar. I stammered in baffled gratitude. But know this, he said. If I find any, any evidence that you are fomenting action against me or that you have had any contact with the apostate, I will have you hanged without plea or trial. The people say you are a saint, but I think you are another ragged refugee. Do you understand? But I swallowed my pride and bowed deeply as I could manage. Was this how the Darkling felt? Being forced to bend and scrape before a dissolute fool... Yeah, that is actually how you felt for centuries. For centuries, it was king after king. It was encounter like this after encounter like this. And he had had bloody enough. And now you're actually siding with it. I can't. I can't. I'm probably going to tag this video just Team Darkling. But At the very least, she could have taken her Grisha and gotten the fuck out. Because what she is doing right now, I physically cannot stand it. I will say one thing, Alina is hilarious, and I love her. <laughs> I mean, I love her, not as much as the Alexander, but I love her. She is sassy and sarcastic, and 
an icon. <laughs> I surveyed the room and let out a long breath. What had I been expecting? A dungeon? A pit? That the Darkling slept suspended from the branches of a tree? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, look at how dramatic his room actually is. I wonder how the hell they're going to do that in the show. The chamber was hexagonal. Its dark wood walls carved into the illusion of a forest crowded with slender trees. Above the huge canopied bed, the domed ceiling was wrought in smooth black obsidian and spangled with chips of mother of pearl laid out in constellations. It was an unusual room and certainly luxurious, but it was still just a bedroom. The shelves were empty of books. The desk and dressing table were bare. All his possessions must have been taken away, away, probably burned or smashed to bits. I suppose I should have been glad the king hadn't torn the entire palace, little palace down. I walked to the side of the bed and smoothed my hand over the cool fabric of the pillow. It was good to know that some part of him was still human, that he laid his head down to rest at night like everyone else. I mean... Oh! Oh! Oh, sorry, I just jumped up because I saw that he that he shows up. Like, finally, I have no idea how much I missed him. I have had enough of Nikolai. With the start, I realized that the room smelled like him. I had never even noticed that he had a scent. I shut my eyes and breathed deeply. What was it? The crisp edge of a winter wind, bare branches, the smell of absence, the smell of night. The wound at my shoulder prickled, and I opened my eyes. The doors to the chamber were shut. I hadn't heard them close. Alina, I whirled. The Darkling was standing on the other side of the bed. I mean... <laughs> if I remember correctly, she's the one who summoned him. By thinking about him. My Alina, he said softly. His face was beautiful, unscarred. Perfect. His fingers brushed my cheek, solid, real. I felt them. The fact that she was in his room and it smelled like him and she felt his absence and his presence and that pulled on his tether. Yes. <laughs> get that to Alina it's creepy but a black ceiling that has like pearls or whatever resembling stars and the walls are all carved dark wood if I remember correctly I read it like two minutes ago but to resemble a forest I'm sorry I am such a fan of that aesthetic Alexander has taste he has taste and I sincerely hope that they actually manage to get that across in the show because he has so much taste i would love to be in a room like that i mean are we shocked <laughs> every time that i read this book i have different opinions but my love for alexander only grows and i mean i'm not really surprised i'm not <sighs> and you shouldn't be either this is the second video the last time i talked for two and a half hours this is a random thought but i know the darkling and baga definitely had an altercation because she lost her eyes and but why didn't he... He wouldn't kill her. He would never kill her. They're, they, <laughs> the two of them draw the line at killing each other. But why did he leave her there? <laughs> she is a person with the... She's the only person in the universe who actually knows him. Maybe he couldn't take her with him. But if he could do that to her eyes, I'm pretty sure he could restrain her and take her with him. Like, why did he leave her there? <laughs> she could advise Alina. She could even use her power as we see her later doing. Why why on earth would he leave her there? She's the only one who knows his name, his ambitions, and everything about him. Seems like such a stupid decision. I'm not sure if it's dis actually explained or not, but why is she there? I love and hate Bagra. Like, I love her as a character. I hate what she actually did to Alexander and how she raised him. I dislike it very much. Bagra pounded the floor with her stick. 
I wanted to keep him from becoming a monster. It's too late for that now, isn't it? Thanks to you, he is further from human than he's ever been. He's long past any redemption. A, that kind of thinking isn't good. <laughs> because that's your son. And B, thanks to you, he is further from human. Thanks to you, sweetie. Thanks to you. You taught him that he wasn't human and that he had no equals. I understand that that was because it protected him because... Everyone wanted to kill him, but you gave him his ego, and now you have the audacity to say that she is to blame? I mean, she is. <laughs> but y you get my point. Like, I love you, Bagra, but you're kind of to blame for everything. This also might feel very stupid, but why are the kids there? I mean, I get that the Darkling left very quickly, but he left all the Grisha children there. How was he sure that the king wouldn't kill them? We know that the Darkling never kills Grisha. So he obviously cares about their future. They're all he cares about. Why? How did he know that the king wouldn't kill them? She's like a gaggle of children, Grisha children, left from their classes. Like, who's still holding the classes? Why are they still there? Why aren't they protected? Like... <laughs> The Grisha kids are literally your future, and most of them are without parents. So I'm very confused as to why the kids and Bagra were left there. I mean, he clearly had time before he left, because he punished Bagra and left her there. Which means that he definitely had time to pick them both up. I am severely confused by a lot of this. <laughs> I can't believe I never asked these questions before, but why are the kids there? Why is Bagra still there? Why didn't he take her with him? I have no idea. Here we are, again, because Alina is here, which I absolutely despise. But If they can maintain the belief that the Darkling can be bargained with or brought to heal, then they don't have to face the reality of the situation. What's the reality of the situation? That he finally said, screw you, after centuries and centuries of being under your boot. And his kind being under your boot, not just him, because he raised the fold in his anger a while ago and it got out of control. Then he was still controlled by you, brought to heal. It just triggers me so much because it's not just the Darkling, it's people versus Grisha. Even while Alina's Grisha are here, they're treated like shit. The soldiers' eyes gleam when they see the guns. They don't trust the Grisha. And if Alina wasn't, wasn't there, they'd be screwed. And if we're being realistic, Alina is actually kind of weak with the power. Like, she's really weak. Without the stag's antlers and the fetter, she wouldn't even be able to look in the Darkling's direction with if he didn't want her to. Like... Forrest, I mean, I love her. Don't get me wrong. I love her. Do not get me wrong. But for a sun summoner, she's really weak. Like, her power didn't get stronger, but she got two amplifiers. So, and she is the only thing that's actually keeping them together at this point. I think, I will die on the hill that she should have just went with the Darkling. <laughs> it's never made more sense than now. And, yeah, I agree that he wanted to kill Mal, which was the worst part of book one. I really hated that because he's supposed to be ancient and wise. But this is just killing me. It's killing me that she's with the king. Now. I'm happy to go down fighting, but I don't want my parents left, the, left to the Darkling's mercy. I do. Nikolai, I do. I want your parents left to the Darklings. Not mercy, in fact. I want him to use the cut on them. But yo, yeah, that's not going to happen. And then she's pissed off because he said the squalors are gifts. I wanted to make room for Bagra. She shouldn't have to face the Darkling again. She's been through enough. This woman is a thousand years old, and that is her son. I'm pretty sure she can handle herself, Alina. And she will, because I already know mm -hmm. she will. So this is just beyond annoying. Well, 
yeah, I can't wait for the next force bond because this is just, no. We're back in this angle. I always read in this angle, but the Darkling is such a dramatic, dramatic person and I love him. Because when he appears to her when they're in the church, he's literally like, as we pass by the Darkling, he turned his head to watch us. He pressed a finger to his lips, then bent his head in, in a mocking imitation of prayer. He's using her Nivet so easily. He's just literally, I have no idea where he is. And uh, I wish we knew more about where he actually was and what he was doing and what he was telling his people. And I wish we got more of his perspective. I understand this is first person, but like the Genya story, I wish we got more of another perspective in these books because I really want to know what is happening with him when he is not here. But the fact that he, wherever he is, he takes the time to sit down and pull at the tether that he has with Alina just to creep her out. I mean, he wants to see her, yes, but... The flare. I understand. Mal and Alina are my favorites, aside from Alexandra and Genya. But their, their dynamic is beautiful because even though they're a couple they're still sort of both sarcastic like best friends and i love it so much <laughs> do you think the darkling has to deal with unwanted and wet advances from wet life to royals i asked glumly mal snickered what's so funny i just pictured the darkling being cornered by a sweaty duchess trying to have her wait with him yeah i'm imagining it too i mean he's hot looking so I would understand that over the centuries someone definitely wanted to cozy up to him, but I actually, I, I'm rambling again, I actually imagine Grisha cozying up to him a lot more than actual women because of the fact that he's an amplifier, so, poor Darkles, <laughs> but you two are both icons and I am so happy that you're being funny together because... Like, if the Darkling wasn't even an option and the other love interest was Nikolai, which, thank God, he isn't, I would still love Mal so much. I actually love and appreciate the development of their dynamic through the story a lot. I swear to God, I relate more to Mal. He's the one who actually wants to leave. He's the one who wants to leave it all behind the royals and Os Alta because <laughs> he's literally like, Saints, I hate this place. I blinked, startled by the vehemence in his voice. You do? I hate the parties. I hate the people. I hate everything about it. You and me both, Mal. You and me both. I've been suffering, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, no matter what you think about him, you can really feel the absence of the Darkling and the other Grisha because... In book one, at least you had a magical feel about it, and you felt like there was this power. But in Siege and Storm, I mean, I'm almost on page 300, which means I'm almost done. There is a severe lack of magic in this book, because it's mostly just traveling around and parading and politics. There's only the fight in the end and the fight in the beginning. Aside from that, it's literally just court politics and I hate that so much so I am absolutely team Mal in this scenario if I can't have the Darkling then at least listen to Mal sweetie because he is the only smart one here in this reread I am liking Mal more and more like I realized that him and the Darkling are terrible enemies because they're both love interests but I love them both so much I'm one of the only people in the universe that actually like Mal a lot but he's literally like you came here for Ravka I came here for you you're my flag you're my nation and I 100,000% agree with him as I have already said 13 times in this vlog she should have left leave Nikolai to protect his bitch ass father and then deal with the aftermath you have absolutely no reason to support them literally none if you don't want to support the darkling even though he is correct then don't support the king sweetie just 
be Switzerland <laughs> and go away with Mal and the rest of the Grisha if they will follow you, but do not protect the king. And Mal's literally like, I don't even know what I am doing here. I came here for you and here you are parading with Nikolai. And honestly, yes, power to him because <laughs> as much as I love Alina, which is a lot, yes, absolutely correct, sir. Sorry, I know I literally just... This is gonna fall. I literally just <laughs> finished the last clip and I turned the page. The Darkling, I don't know how he picks the moments when he can appear to Alina. Maybe when she's like, he literally kisses her. <laughs> and the Darkling appears behind Mal and she stiffens so Mal thinks it's because of him. I'm not sure if the Darkling shows up because she thinks of him, which is possible. Because I'm not sure that he has the power to actually know that they're kissing so he can show up for dramatic effect. But the fact that this bitch is literally like, tell him you see me when he takes you in his arms. I mean... Hmm. I mean, I literally just said that I love Mal. Every time that Alexander shows up, I'm like... Mm. <laughs> so... Alina, honey, I mean mood, mood. I would also like Amal, but I would so think about the Darkling if he existed. But I don't know if she actually called to him, if her heart calls to him when she thinks of him. But like the fact that he would appear just as she is kissing Mal, <laughs> the drama of it. And now because she's squeezing her eyes and flinching, she he thinks that that's, because of him. If you didn't want me, you should have just said so. Don't feel too bad, Tracker, said the Darkling. All men can be made fools. <laughs> this bitch is just narrating in the background and Alina must be like, okay, can you fucking leave? <laughs> Oh, is it Nikolai? What? No! Another Otkazantia Alina, the Darkling, mocked. <laughs> I, I have still have no idea if she actually thought about him or if he just picked the moment. But he is literally like... <laughs> this is a comedy at this point. I am imagining a scenario where she's fighting with Mal after she flinched when he kissed her. And this bitch is just standing in the background smirking and commenting <laughs> like, Another Otkazatsya Alina, really? <laughs> I don't know. I, this could be such a comedy if they chose if they choose to shoot it like this. And poor, poor Mal thinks that... <laughs> Oh, thinks that she was he was edged out by Alina by Nikolai. He's literally just waiting, hoping you'd miss me enough to tell them all to go to hell. Frankly, she should have, but that's besides the point. I swallowed, trying to block out the vision of the Darkling's cold smile. This bitch is, as I said, this bitch is just smirking. I don't want to hear about the Darkling. I'm done. I mean, fair, fair. It hurts me. It hurts me a lot, but... Ooh, what happens afterwards? I love that a lot. I didn't hear the Darkling move. I only knew when he was beside me. His long fingers brushed the hair back from my neck and rested on the collar. When he kissed my cheek, his lips were cold. This was everything. I know people are... Really? This is a long clip. People are so pressed about how Mal was like, pick me, Alina, pick me, Alina, but... He has every right to actually want that. Every right. Imagine that you're a human. In this situation. I would also feel left out, and if it was someone that I loved, and someone that loved me back... And I was doing literally everything for them. I deserted the army for them. I would want them to want me. Like, she's been sending him away because it's been easier for both of them. But I would also want them to be like, I don't want you to leave. And now she actually flinched. And she has been hanging around with Nikolai. She's been letting them parade her around. 
he is 100,000% justified, and his insecurity is actually a very, very realistic aspect of his character. That's all I will say for now, but yeah, anyone who hates Mal, we can have a conversation about it, but when the show comes out, I am a number one Darkling stan, but Alina and Mal, that's, yeah, that's my thing. All right, let's talk about it. I should actually talk about it because I've been thinking about it for the last several pages, so I will comment. They've been saying for about 150 pages that the Darkling is building his army. A, I've been wondering for a while now, even if he went into Fierda or Shu Han, didn't he, how did he go into Fierda or Shu Han? They all hate Grisha. But that aside, Let's say he's in the mountains. He's been building his army. I mean, all the Grisha that already went with him went with him. No one else will flock to him for obvious reasons. And he doesn't need months or maybe weeks, feels like months actually, to create Nishavoya. And if he is taking that long, he should be very drained. No idea why he would be creating them for months, though, if he can just do it on command. But they keep saying building his army, and I'm just like, what? Building a what? He has an army. He should have attacked immediately. Instead, he is taking weeks minimum to apparently create many Nichevoya and also has the time to casually, I mean, he is a very powerful man. We know this. Like, he is a god compared to Alina without the amplifiers, and even with the amplifiers. But he's still taking weeks to do that. Building an army. He is apparently crawling inside Alina's head all the time, which is not that easy to do because it's a new power. Even she will be very surprised when she learns how to use it. He has been inside her head since they were literally in the fold. So for pretty much this whole book, he's been doing that to her. And he still hasn't attacked. Like, he still wasn't worried about the fact that they have his stuff. He w didn't try to go after the apparat. He didn't go after his mother, who knows everything about him and Morozova, and he isn't sure that she won't betray him anymore. Like... What is he doing? <laughs> Literally, what is he doing? There is no reason why he let them come up with a plan, build all the weapons, go through the fold, and amass an army. They had to gather an army. He didn't. So I do not understand why he hadn't attacked, like, weeks ago. I know we need time for the protagonists to collect their arsenal, but... It makes absolutely no rational sense for why he hasn't attacked yet. It pretty much seems like he is twiddling his thumbs and messing with Alina while she's kissing. That's all he is doing. So, I hate finding plot holes in my favorite stories. But let's be real realistic. I love the Grisha trilogy for the characters and the magic in the world. Not so much the plot. Except for Rune and Rising. I am so bored with these plots. The rant is over, we can talk again. Worst, the visions were getting clearer and more frequent. The Darkling appeared to me almost every day, usually in his chambers or the aisles of the library, sometimes in the war room during council meetings or as I walked back to the Grand Palace at dusk. So at every time of the day, this bitch's show... How? How is he showing... How does he have time if he is... Building his army, which is apparently taking months, or as I said, weeks. How does he have time to show up and mess with her at every time of the day? And now he's showing up every day. I get that it's fun, but oh my god, attack already, Alexander. Like, we have no time for this. Unless he is actually in some way being kind and allowing them to mount a defense, which... As much as I am an apologist for him because he is correct, I do not really see him giving them time to be nice. So, what are you doing, Alexander? Kindly and respectfully, what the fuck? But, 
that being said, I love their dynamics when they're having these force bond scenes, so. Why won't you leave me alone? I whispered one night as he hovered behind me while I tried to work at my desk. He's literally just looking at her while she is writing. I love him. I wish he hovered behind me, but he doesn't exist. Long minutes passed. I didn't think he would answer. I'm sorry for the angles. I even had time to hope he might have gone until I felt his hand on my shoulder. Then I'd be alone too, he said, and he stayed the whole night through till the lamps burned down to nothing. I mean, people are gonna say that he's only doing all of this <laughs> to mess with her. And on some level he is, I will tell you that. But when he lost Bagra and he realized that she betrayed him, Alina is literally all he has. Not to talk too much about Ruin and Rising, but the end in this correlates. He grew to love Alina. Definitely <laughs> more in book three. But he thought he'd finally found an equal. Someone who could actually be a match for him. And... The line, then I'd be alone too, his greatest theme throughout the books is that he doesn't want to be alone. Especially in Ruin and Rising, and we know what his final words are, which kills me every time. But the, the only thing he says is, then I'd be alone too, is because he actually sympathizes. She is there in exactly the same position as he is. They're calling her Moya, Moy Sovereigny, just like they called him that. She is literally him right now, and he understands. He really understands. He was forced to do this for centuries, and she actually lost her lover because he isn't her equal, and he doesn't understand, and he never could, which is exactly what the Darkling told her and what he told Genya. She can't be happy with him because he will actually never understand her, which is correct. It's rude and harsh and is correct. So this line is just so powerful and I've been talking about it for several minutes now. I'll try and talk less, but every time that I have a rant incoming, it's just bad. <laughs> I was just so annoyed because it's pretty much mostly Nikolai and Alina. <laughs> I wouldn't marry Vasily if he had a pet firebird named Ludmila and I couldn't care less about his royal stock. A firebird named Ludmila. That actually made me laugh a little. As I said, Sassy Alina is my favorite Alina by far. Yeah, I'm not living for this banter. I hate Nikolai, so... <laughs> I won't rehash myself, but every time he starts speaking, I'm just like... If there was a skip button on books, I would press it. There's a very good chance that if I'm forced to sit through his stupid birthday dinner, I'll end up sobbing into my cake. Me. Literally me. It is such a mood. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is the... Even though I love them, this is the part of the love story that I'm never interested in. Like, Because they had a fight, he kissed Zoya, she almost kissed Nikolai. It's literally my face every time I read this. <laughs> I cannot muster the interest. I genuinely can't. Who kissed who? Like In this scenario, I am literally the Darkling. I just appear in the shadows, roll my eyes, and smirk. My very intelligent person only now realized the fact that when his fingers close around her wrist, that's the jolt she feels. <laughs> I am truly so into they because they brush it off. Maybe that's why I never really paid attention to it. I was really into the fight, and they brush it off. But his fingers literally close around her wrist, and she feels the amplifier. Fuck me, I love it. I love that so much. Finally reached the scene. I realize I look a li little manic, but that's fine. When she wakes up and she thinks that Mal is kissing her, but it ain't Mal. This is the kind of drama that we love. I'm not sure if she... This is never explored. But considering that he looks like Mal to her now, she says, 
brown hair. He looks like Mel. Is he able to manipulate how he looks when he appears to her? I mean, obviously, because he appears perfectly. But I thought that was just because he is un scarred in the spirit world or whatever but she never uses that when she crosses over to him she never looks like someone else because they both know that the other one is the only one who can appear like that but why do they not use it again this is the only instance where we see their bond and he looks like someone else I mean yeah she's tired and confused but still And the fact that he will corrupt a kiss and just I mean, as much as... I, I keep repeating it. As much as I love Madeline, like every time that the Darkling shows up, I am a Darkling, a whore through and through. <laughs> I needed to see his face. but So basically, I'm not sure if she's tired or if it's dark and maybe he didn't even change his appearance or she just didn't care up until now. I cupped his head with my hands, tilting his chin, and as my gaze met his, I shrank back. I looked into Mal's eyes, his familiar blue eyes, except they weren't blue. In the dying lamplight, they glimmered quartz gray. I will die on the hill that they should have just let Ben Barnes wear contacts. <laughs> as much as I love his dark eyes, he needed to have gray eyes. He needed it because it's such a distinct feature. He smiled then, a cold, clever smile like none I'd ever seen on his lips. I missed you too, Alina. That voice, cool and smooth as glass. Mal's feature mel me features melted into the shadow and then formed again like a face from the mist, pale, beautiful. The thick shock of black hair, the perfect sweep of jaw. Darkling rested one gentle hand on my cheek. Soon, he whispered. Like... The power they would have held together. I mean, he needs to have, he needed to have gray eyes in the show. It is such a shame, such a shame. But the fact that he, he smiles in a way that she'd never seen before. I mean, he literally said Alina and she, and they immediately started kissing. So let me just, I, <laughs> He woke her up by kissing her. Like, yes, she wanted it to be Mal. But I am still living for that scene. <sighs> I will just read it out. Great, I thought dismally. Maybe I'll have another hallucination in the middle of the dining room and the Darkling will, <laughs> the darkling will climb out of the soup to read. If anything cannot be disputed, it is the absolute sass of Alina Starkov. <laughs> and I really hope that they keep that in the show. That's her literally her best best attribute. She is always, always sassy. Exactly, Alina, and you want to throw your lot in with these idiots. Vasily literally, literally let the Darkling in. But also, I return to my statement how the hell did the darkling get support from the fiatans we all read six of crows fiatans hate grisha their soldiers literally kill them on sight and you want to tell me that the darkling somehow got fiatan officers to lie for him so he could go into ravka i mean maybe he promised them a part of ravka But I was going to say maybe he intimidating, intimidated them by the fold or the Nishavoya. But their emissaries were at the ship. They know he can't expand the fold without Alina. But maybe he used... I mean, yeah, probably intimidation. I don't think they went with him willingly. He probably used the Nishavoya as proof that he can now go into the fold. So that's why they listened to him, I think. But if he has that intimidation tactic, 
which is not enough for them to actually be happy that Alina isn't dead. If he intimidates them enough just with the Nietzsche Boya, I don't know what they're hoping for. This is where it all falls apart, I think, because if he got Fjerdan's support, there's literally no reason at all why he lost. <laughs> I mean, I know why he lost in the end, but why his forces lost. He has the Nishavoya, he has the Grisha, and he has the support of Fierda and probably Shu Han because he intimidated the crap out of both of them. Because I don't see any other way that they would work with him, considering that both of them really hate Grisha. Shu Han dissect them and Fierda killed them. So, why did he ever lose? How did his forces ever lose? Like, the Lansovs are devastated here. There's absolutely no reason for them to win in Ruin and Rising. Literally none. But yeah, I don't remember all of Ruin and Rising, so we'll talk about this next time, and that's my favorite book by far. Stupid question, but... If the Nishavoya are... Darkness personified... How are they physical? Like, I get that they can, obviously, otherwise they would be useless, that they can touch other people and bite them. But they're still made of shadow, and they can reform. So how are people tackling them and pulling them by their legs and slashing at them with swords? I thought the whole point of the Nichevoya and their danger was that only light could harm them. But now I see many soldiers slashing at them with blades. I mean, they should all be dead on sight, right? If only Alina's blades of light or the cut can actually do something to them. Then this entire charge is pointless, the one that Tolia and Tamar are leading. It's pointless. Blades aren't supposed to do anything against the Nichevoya. Just like bullets, otherwise we wouldn't be having the problem that only Alina can deal with them. Or maybe I'm just missing something because I've been so bored <laughs> with the middle of this book. But, yeah. It's time for the showdown in the church and I love that so much. <laughs> this is a serious action scene, but I died. I burst out laughing. The chapel, did she pl plan to throw hymnals at the Darkling? <laughs> <laughs> why why is that so funny to me we are in the middle of a battle and Alina is being sarcastic I mean frankly me that would be me but now he is coming and <laughs> I'm way too excited I feel like I haven't seen him in a million years The building shook as a loud crack of thunder split the air. The chapel door blew to pieces. Toya was thrown backwards, and darkness flooded through. The Darkling came borne on a tide of shadow, held aloft by monsters who set his feet upon the chapel floor with infinite care. I am going to need to- I know season 2 is already confirmed. I cannot wait to see Ben Barnes floating in the air, carried by darkness. The Nietzsche Boya writhed and whirled around the Darkling, shifting and reforming as the b bullets struck their bodies, one taking the piece, place of another in a seamless tide of shadow. He didn't even break stride. I mean, frankly, if I were his enemy, which I would never be his enemy, if I saw that this bitch had enough strength to get inside my head, use the cut repeatedly, and control thousands of his shadow monsters that feed on his own energy and still barely look like he is sweating I would just give up like immediately <laughs> oh this is gonna be the part when he shows that he hurt Genya which I hate because I loved Genya the Darkling come on <laughs> Finally, he's offering for her to come with him, and she's just like, I don't need to lie, Alina wants to come with me. She doesn't want any part of you, no? The Darkling asked. His dark hair gleamed in the lamplight of the chapel. Summoning his shadow army had taken its toll. He was thinner, paler, but somehow the sharp angles of his face had only become more beautiful. 
I warned you that your Otkazatsya could never understand you, Alina. I told you that he would only come to fear you and resent your power. Tell me I was wrong. You were wrong. The Darkling shook his head. You cannot lie to me. Do you think I could have come to you again and again if you had been less alone? You called to me and I answered. I couldn't quite believe what I was hearing. You, you were there on the fold in the palace last night. But I'm sorry. The fact that she was alone and she's like, do you think I could have come to you if you had been less alone? You called to me and I answered. The pa <laughs> When she was lonely, she called to him because even she knows that he is the only one who understands her. She doesn't like it, but she knows it. And he's literally like, I could not have come to you if you didn't pull the tether too. You called to me and I answered. Yeah. Yeah, I am Dark Lena Trash, no matter how much I love Mal. You have no idea what I can make possible, Tracker. I've seen what you truly are, said the Darkling, and I've never turned away. I never will. Can he say the same? Hmm. But I'm sorry, but even his words still ring true here. Come with me now and it all stops. To fear the uncertainty, the bloodshed. Let him go, Lena. Let them all go. No, I said, but even as I shook my head, something in me cried out, yes. Because she knows that what he's saying is actually true. Let them go. You're going to live a long life. Can we please talk about the fact that he is again making sense? He's literally like, you mourn everyone there, but what of the thousands lost before? What of all of our kind that were slaughtered? What of every war that's been waged ever? It sounds mean, but when he says, says, when will you let me stop, I actually agree with him in a weird way, because if she actually tried to work with him, she'd put in some actual effort to change something. <laughs> Not just, like, bitch and moan with the king, but you get my point. When he's like, we need the tracker for the firebird, she, and she's like, he goes for you, can't have both of us. The Darkling paused, then nodded. He literally just wants her. He needs her, yes, but we've also established that he wants her. She is the only one who can make him feel, feel less alone and it hurts the crap out of me. Oh, and the next scene, she goes to him. Under the power of this moment, we are going to read it together. She finally told Mal to leave and for everyone else to leave. The Darkling stood waiting, his shadow guard hovering and shifting around him. I was afraid, but beneath the fear I was eager. We are alike, he said, as no one else is, as no one else will ever be. The truth of it rang through me like calls to like. He held out his hand and I stepped into his arms. I cupped the back of his neck, feeling the silken brush of his hair on my fingertips. I knew Mal was watching. I needed him to turn away. I needed him to go. I tilted my face up to the Darklings. My power is yours, I whispered. I saw the elation and triumph in his eyes as, his, as he lowered his mouth to mine. Our lips met and the connection between us opened. This was not the way he touched me in my visions when he'd come to me as a shadow. This was real and I could drown in it. <clears throat> power flowed through me. The power of the stag, its strong heart beating in both our bodies. The life he'd taken, the life I'd tried to save. But I also felt the Darkling's power, the power of the Black Heretic, the power of the Fold. Like calls to like. I'd sensed it when the hummingbird entered the unsea, but I'd been too afraid to embrace it. This time, I didn't fight. I let go of my fear, my guilt, my shame. There was darkness inside me. He had put it there, and I would no longer deny it. The Volcar, the Nishivoya, they were my monsters. All of them. And he, is my, and he was my monster, too. I need to compose myself. <laughs> That's why I loved her when I first read her, because Lee came closest to actually dancing with the devil for the main character. Because she created a great villain, and the hero acknowledges that. And it makes my heart 
beat as fast as it did when I read it the first time. When she realizes we are alike. You're my monster, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my power is yours, I repeated. His arms tightened around me. And yours is mine, I whispered against his lips. <clears throat> the power they hold together. As Ben Barnes said in the trailer, the only thing stronger than you or me is us together. How his arms tighten around her. I'm just, I am weak. I am weak. But when she says, my power is yours, mine. The word re reverberated through me, through both of us. The shadow soldiers shifted and whirred. I remembered the way it had felt in that snowy glade when the Darkling had placed the collar around my neck and seized control of my power. I reached across the connection between us. He reared back. What are you doing? I knew why he had never intended to kill the Sea Whip himself, why he hadn't wanted to form that second connection. He was afraid. Mine. I forced my way across the bond, forged by Morozova's collar, and grabbed hold of the Darkling's power. Darkness spilled from him, blacking from his palms, billowing and skittering, blooming into the shape of Nichevoya, forming hands, head, claws, wings. The first of my abominations. The Darkling tried to pull away from me, but I clutched him tighter, calling his power, calling the darkness as he had once used the collar to summon my light. Another creature burst forth, and then another. The Darkling cried out as it was wrenched from him. I felt it, too, felt my heart constrict as each shadow soldier tore a little bit of me away, exacting the price of its creation. Stop, the Darkling rasped. The Nichevoya whirred nervously around us, clicking and humming, faster and faster. One after another, I pulled my dark soldiers into being, and my army rose up around us. The Darkling moaned, and so did I. We fell against each other, but I did not relent. I... <clears throat> I am. I cannot wait to see this animated. I'll finish. <laughs> You'll kill us both, he cried. Yes, I said. The Darkling's legs buckled and we collapsed to our knees. This was not the small science. This was magic. Something ancient, the making at the heart of the world. It was terrifying, limitless. No wonder the Darkling hungered for more. The darkness buzzed and clattered. A thousand locusts, beetles, hungry flies, clicking their legs, beating their wings. The Nishavoya wavered and reformed, wearing in a frenzy, driven on by his rage and my exultation. Another monster, another. Blood was pouring from the Darkling's nose. The room seemed to rock, and I realized I was convulsing. I was dying, bit by bit, with every monster that wrenched itself free. Just a little longer, I thought. Just a few more. Just enough so I know that I've sent him to the next world before I follow. Alina, I heard Mal calling. He was tugging me, pulling me away. No, I shouted. Let me end this. Alina. He wrenched me away from the Darkling, but not before I called out to my children in one final exhortation. Bring it down. The Darkling slumped to the ground. The monsters rose in a whirling black column around him, then crashed against the walls of the chapel, shaking the little building to its very foundations. Maul had me in his arms and was running up the aisle. The Nichevoya were hurling themselves against the chapel wall. Slabs of plaster crashed to the floor. The blue dome swayed as its supports began to give way. Now they're in the passage, and a boom sounded for some, from somewhere far behind us as the chapel collapsed. The impact roared through the passageway. A cloud of dirt and debris struck us with the force of an oncoming wave. Mal flew forward. I tumbled from his arms, and the world came down around us. I... I realized you didn't ask for me to read this entire thing out, but I wanted to because this is the one scene in this book that I had a lot of emotion invested into it. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed with me. And now I am not going to have much else to comment because I think it's pretty much done now. This was so powerful when she accepts that you hold my heart, but I also hold yours and your power and that they create magic together in it. <laughs> if anything, this is such an iconic ending to the book. So many men had tried to make her a queen. Now she understood that she was meant for something more. The Darkling had told her he was destined to rule. He had claimed his throne and a part of her too. He was welcome to it. For the living and the dead, she would make herself a reckoning. She would rise. And then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we have finished Siege and Storm. Thoughts. Uh, <laughs> 
This was already long enough, but in conclusion, it took me a while to read this because the first chunk is sort of fun, but I don't like the boat stuff. Then a very large chunk of this book, I think from like 150 to 300 pages, it's Nikolai and courtroom drama, which I hate. And then the finale is epic. I remember the first time I read it, I could not put it down because the battle is awesome. The powers, the magic is finally back and her and the Darkling are a force to be reckoned with. They look at each other and I immediately like this scene because their dynamic is immaculate. <laughs> and the next vlog will be Ruin and Rising, which I will do my best not to make it three hours long. But, I mean, I am very hard to shut up when I talk about something that I like. That being said, this book had a lot of issues that I didn't want to acknowledge the first time, mostly with the plot. But if you can answer some of my problems and make it so that they're not problems, I would be very grateful. And that being said, I am done. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts. I hope you <laughs> had fun listening to me ranting. And let me know what you think about the book. Definitely, I am always open to discussing them. And I only have one more to read and upload before the show comes out when we can all freak out. I will probably actually make a video where I review the first season because I just read the book. So it'd be kind of cool, I think. And I never review shows, but I think that would be pretty awesome. Let me know if you would be interested. And... Yeah, I'm not sure what I would rate this. <laughs> I'm gonna need to bump this down too to like a four. Maybe the last one is the only one that actually would be a five. The first one was a 2.7 or a three. The second one would probably be like a 3.5, which means a low four because it's better than the first one. It's better constructed, but there's too much Nikolai and Ruin and Rising would definitely be a five. I am sure of that. So yeah. There's no extra content at the end of this one. I think it's just the picture of Nikolai, which we do not want. We do not want in this house. So that is pretty much it. And wasn't much use for this book in this vlog, but I flipped through it a couple of times to see all the details on Ilya's photo and the others. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I have rambled enough. Again, I hope you had fun and get ready for the third one because that one will definitely be longest because it's my favorite book in the trilogy. And then in two and a half weeks, we get the show. So I am beyond excited and I will see you in the next one.